Right, so we open on Finn, Poe, BB-8, yeah. and Rose, who's actually in this version more than 76 seconds, infiltrating an Imperial shipyard in the hope of blowing it all up with their caption. Luckily, they're rescued by Rey in a Tusken Raider disguise with a sweet-ass new lightsaber. They all steal a Star Destroyer and bail. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren is hiding out on Mustafa at Vader's castle. He's looking around for the ultimate power or whatever, and he's got stubble, which indicates both the passage of time and his unraveling sanity. It's like a short visual cue for both of those things. He's also haunted by the ghost of Luke Skywalker, who's all, Hey, I'm a ghost, and I'm here to tell you to be nice. But Kylo's all, I'm not nice, I'm all about this Sith holocron I found. He then activates it, and an old recording for Vader plays of the Emperor, who's still very much dead, by the way, because... You know, why wouldn't he be? Anyway, he's saying, Look, Darth Vader, if Luke cuts me in half, first of all, bad form on your behalf, you blew it. But if he does, take him to Tor Valum, who was my Sith teacher. You're gonna love him, he's great. Then the holocron explodes in Kylo Ren's face because he's not Darth Vader, and it scars him pretty badly for real, and he's forced to repair his face with like, Mandalorian metal. He looks like a real shit show, mate. It's a disaster. So Ray realizes that they've got all these Imperial vehicles on the Star Destroyer that they stole, but no one is around to pilot them. Their army is too small. So she looks at all those Jedi books that she stole, the ones that Luke never bothered to read, and it talks of a Force Beacon under the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. And this thing can apparently reach out across the galaxy like a big old phone call. And because it's old technology, the First Order can't stop it. Meanwhile, Kylo comes back to Hux on Coruscant and reminds him, I don't like you and I don't like what you're about. But Stop the resistance, why don't you? Also, ignore my face. I don't want to get into it. Oh, also, FYI, don't kill Ray. Okay, bye. He then tells Vader's mask that he doesn't love him or need him anymore, and he throws it away. So it turns out Ray's been training with the ghost of Luke. He keeps telling her to be a Jedi. But Ray thinks that maybe there's a middle ground on all this force light, force dark stuff that's been going on for bloody forever. Before she leaves, though, to do adventures, Ray tells Leia that Kylo is probably good, and Leia says, yeah, maybe, I don't know. But hey, I reckon you're a new thing, so that's good, I guess. All right, good luck. Kylo then arrives on the planet Remicor and meets Tor Valum, who says, we should be friends and I'll train you, but you're all about the past too much. And Kylo says, I'm not about the past at all. Kill the past, that's the thing that I always say. I'm about that big time. Tor is skeptical. Mm, that seems unlikely, but let's get started. I'm going to teach you how to drain the force out of something. Try it on that weird creature over there. Kylo does and it works, and he's super pumped about it. He's unlocked a new ability in his force skill tree. Now go into that spooky cave that's similar to that one in the movie Empire Strikes Back. Tor says. Kylo goes in and is surprised to see Vader. He loses a fight to him and he's very unhappy. He's got a big grumpy face. Look at that. So as retaliation, he sucks the life out of Tor Valum. Killing this guy. He's dead now. Meanwhile, the Resistance has managed to activate the beacon under Coruscant and it reaches out to the gamut of Star Wars characters. Broom Kid hears it. We get a sneaky Bosk cameo. Thumbs up to you too, Bosk. It's good to see ya. Ray, Chewie, and Poe, though, they're on the planet Bonadan. That's a different planet. And they're confronted by the Knights of Ren. They all look the same here because Ray's about to kill them all and you know, who cares? There we go. She then mind tricks Poe into leaving so she can go on a mission alone. But he likes Ray and wants to kiss, but she's like, there's no time for kisses. But they do kiss, and then Poe leaves because of mind tricks. Ray and Kylo arrive on Mortis. Same time, different places. Ray has a vision of her parents and demands to know, why are you be leaving me for? And Kylo also has a vision where suddenly he's a little boy talking to Han Solo. Han says, hey, don't be so mean all the time. Give me a lightsaber. And little Kylo says, no. Cut back to Coruscant. There's a huge battle with the Resistance and the First Order happening. One of those classic Star Wars battles of old. Even Lando's there flying a ship. Uh, Ethan, who's animating this? Is this whole battle, is it a bit, is it a bit too difficult to animate? Oh yeah, okay, you know what, don't worry about it. Can you at least put Chewie flying an X-Wing? Because that's, that's actually in the script. Can you put that in? Oh, that's terrific, good stuff. Ray and Kylo confront each other on a mountain. Ray says, I know you're the one that killed my parents in that rain flashback from The Force Awakens. And Kylo says, yeah, that was me. Snoke said that I have to do it. Let's have a big fight. They do and Kylo manages to cut her right across the face and blinds her. He then enters the temple looking for the ancient power or whatever he's, he's doing here, I can't remember. But there's nothing. Luke confronts him and says, you know, good mate, you're not a Skywalker. Which I think is intended as an insult, but I feel like that's that's a compliment to Kylo, is it? Anyways, that's when Rey enters and she's got a bandage wrapped around her eyes. I'm the light and the dark or whatever, she says. And then they have another fight and she shatters his lightsaber hilt, cutting off a bunch of his fingers. In an act of desperation, he drains the energy from her, which ends up healing his face. He's bloody loving it. Meanwhile, uh, Hux, he lost the battle of Coruscant and he kills himself on Mace Windu's lightsaber. Oh, there's like a side story in this about how he wants to use the force. Now he's collecting artifacts, but we don't have time for any of that, do we? Let's keep it brief. Cut back to Kylo and Rey. Leia reaches out to him with the force and he realizes that he should be good. So he gives Rey back all of her force energy. And as he dies, he tells her her name is Rey Solano. And Rey says, don't you mean Rey Palpatine? And he says, 
Well, that seems a little fan servicey, don't you think? And Ray says, yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. She's then transported to an astral plane where she meets the likes of Obi-Wan and Yoda and Luke. And they say, good job on all the balance that you did. After you go back to the, to the real world and probably start a Jedi school if you got time to do that. Anyways, everyone who's not dead meets up. R2-D2 plays the events of Star Wars for everybody. Because you know he recorded most of that. And then there's probably a big cheer from everybody. And Finn wonders for a second if he's force sensitive. But it's a passing thought because he's not. And then everybody stands around awkwardly in silence. Whilst I tell the people watching this to subscribe and like the video. And also big thanks to Ethan for animating this. Please check out all these social medias. Which I'm sure you will. I also have social medias. You can can see those look at those too all right that's star wars am i right So we open on Finn, Poe, BB-8, and Rose, who's actually in this version more than 76 seconds, infiltrating an Imperial shipyard in the hope of blowing it all up. But they're captured. Luckily, they're rescued by Rey in a Tusken Raider disguise with a sweet-ass new lightsaber. They all steal a Star Destroyer and bail. Meanwhile, Kylo Ren is hiding out on Mustafa at Vader's castle. He's looking around for the ultimate power or whatever, and he's got stubble, which indicates both the passage of time and his unraveling sanity. It's like a short visual cue for both of those things. He's also haunted by the ghost of Luke Skywalker, who's all, hey, I'm a ghost and I'm here to tell you to be nice. But Kylo's all, I'm not nice, I'm all about this Sith holocron I found. He then activates it and an old recording for Vader plays of the Emperor, who's still very much dead, by the way, because... You know, why, why wouldn't he be? Anyway, he's saying, Look, Darth Vader, if Luke cuts me in half, first of all, bad form on your behalf, you blew it. But if he does, take him to Tor Valum, who was my Sith teacher. You're gonna love him, he's great. And the holocron explodes in Kylo Ren's face because he's not Darth Vader, and it scars him pretty badly, for real. And he's forced to repair his face with, like, Mandalorian metal. He looks like a real shit show, mate. It's a disaster. 